Last time it's along with Evan Giddings, and we are joined by Mark Willard and F.P. Santangelo. And look, here's how I started the show. How can you, if, if you're a Giants fan, how can you not be excited? Yeah, I mean. Wait, you just said yeah. <laughs> like, no, 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 no. <laughs> like, yeah, like, I'm, I'm, I'm with you. Yeah, turn F.P.'s mic on. Yeah, I, 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 I hit it. I hit the yeah, button. Yeah, yeah. We can hear him now. And, and, sure. No, you, you, you would be. You would be. Should be, right? I, yeah. No, I, like, when I look at myself, I haven't gone to many Giants games the last two or three years. I don't know why. Probably because I didn't think they were very interesting. I, I did not go because of Gabe Kapler. It rubbed me the wrong way a little bit. <laughs> mm. But why? I'll go out there. I'll definitely be out there three to six times this year for Ooh. sure. <laughs> Woo! Well, that, that's a big jump. That is a if big you go, jump. If you go from <laughs> zero the, the or entire one, pirate series. Hey, you. Yeah. Hey, we just used hey. to extrapolate. You extrapolate that over the population of San Francisco, you're, you're, they'll be selling out. That's the over. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's right. Yeah, that's hitting the over, no doubt. But no, I mean, like, we we it's been the same old song for six years with them, and in one off season, they landed some big boys. They just have and. If that wouldn't get you excited, I don't like. I'm wondering why. You've like, been around the team all week. I'm gonna defer to you. Yeah. What? Are, what? What's going on? Well, getting a guy like this gives everybody a, a jolt, right? Yeah. First and foremost. But I, I think based on the last two years, what you're saying, Matt, is, is is indicative of Giants fans in general. And I think what we've all forgotten is that this is a San Francisco freaking Giants. This isn't. Mm -hmm. A, a small market team. This is a team with three championships in five years. This is a storied franchise with some of the best players that have ever walked the face of the earth. And because of maybe the last couple of years and the brand of baseball we're seeing and the way Gabe managed, which I was never a fan of, kind of played the company line on that and you had to, is that we're all forgetting that this is the San Francisco freaking Giants. This is a great organization that wins. This isn't, this isn't a wild card city. So the Niners, we're going for the wild card this year. I mean, we're talking about a playing game with the Warriors, and that feels weird. Right. This isn't a wild card city. This is a championship city, and this is a championship organization. Like, so we're we're forgetting that, and it, it, rightly so. I mean, I get it. I understand what you're saying. I, f I feel like, okay, so when the, the Red Sox had long been a team that didn't get it done, and then they won it in what, four, 2004? Mm -hmm. And I felt like at that time, Red Sox fans just came out of nowhere. They just they just exploded. And I think of the Giants the same way. Like what happened here in this city from on, you know, let's say 10 to 16, it was like a phenomenon with their fans. And it had something to do with the ballpark, no doubt about it, but it also had to do with Lincecum and and all their players and they became almost bigger than baseball. Going to the game you were doing more than just going to the game. You were, it was, like if you were 28 years old, it was a place to be, mm -hmm. to meet people and socialize. And I'm wondering if that's something that could ever be recaptured. Because it was, I, yeah. listen, I don't say stuff was different, but Giants fans in that era was different. If you get I, used to driving a brand new Mercedes around town, all of a sudden you got to go back to your 84 Honda with 250,000 miles on it. You experience championships. You experience being at the top of the mountain. You experience driving a Mercedes, for lack of a better analogy. And you don't want to go back to that. And you can never go back to that. So that's why Giants fans, including all of us in this room, are expecting championships. And they should. You want your fan base to expect championships. It's, uh, it's not even just, like I agree with everything you're saying, but I think it goes even bigger than that. I wonder how we got here, which is a loss of mojo, an inferiority complex, is why I would get so triggered every time, and Dibs got to a point where he knew it, if somebody would say, well, pff, he not coming here. <laughs> oh, back up, dog. What does that mean? Like, what are you saying? He wouldn't come here. We're not Kalamazoo. And the, the damn fan base has been acting like that for the better part of five years. And, and to your points, I get it, but I also don't get it. It's not just a team that should be going for championships. It is in the game of baseball, one of the top five marketing behemoths in the sport. Like, 
this idea of all oh, well, the Dodgers. <laughs> yeah, the, the Diamondbacks are competing with the Dodgers in Phoenix. And we would sit here and go, I mean, how can we? Who would come to this little podunk? Like we're tin cup or something. And we're ding, 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 ding. Like there's a banjo that's playing our soundtrack. <laughs> what well, the hell I, happened? Well, the rat on, here's the rat on the table. Can you tell, share with these guys my the, echo pest control. What? The, the Blake <laughs> Snell quote about playing here in San Francisco because, and FP can speak to this oh, firsthand. Yeah. I think, I think it's the way a lot of people feel. I think feel. this is the way a lot of pro athletes feel. Go ahead. Well, basically, he was asked if the city of San Francisco factored into the decision. He's like, I don't care. He said, I didn't, I didn't he said quote, well, yeah. that's a question for my wife. Correct. That's a question for my family. And in fact, we, we have it if Mark Randy can play it. I don't really care where I played, honestly. Once the season starts, you're so locked into the every day of what you got to do to get ready. And that'd be more of a question for my significant other. She got to <laughs> live there and figure out the city. So I, I kind of talked to her more about that. Uh, San Fran, she liked close to home, close to her loved ones. Um, so there was that. But for me, I'm at the field every day. It doesn't matter what city I'm in. Uh, I know I got baseball and I'll be there all day anyways. So um, it was more, you know, how are they going to treat me? What's the clubhouse like? Uh, how's the fan base? How's the coaching staff? I have so many thoughts. So first of all, you, that's dead on what he said. Well, first, yeah. first of all, it feels there, that way. That's there, the consensus, I think. Is, is there anything more free agent signing than a good San Fran? Like, I feel like <laughs> Dude, everybody in baseball calls it 75% San Fran. Yeah. of new free agents come in and go, So glad to be here in San Fran. Across all sports. And right? in football, yeah. too. They, everybody, the visiting teams it's, all call it San Fran. But, but here's the other thing my wife's the one who's got to live there till November. I mean, not really. You're on a one year deal, and it's March. She's, like, dude, she's living in Danville. Yeah, Let's exactly. Get that but, well, that's what I never understood. And this is why I still don't understand why Farhan brought this up and why Buster Posey further brought it up. And, and, and you can say that, well, they're in baseball and they know what they're being told and the team hotel, the visiting hotel is near the Tenderloin and you can do all that, but I never understood it. Like, for, get out of here with the idea that San Francisco Giants players – are living the inner city life. Dude, you what, get, are, what are we doing? You get in such a bubble. Like you get in your car, you drive to the yard. Right. You try to beat somebody. You hang out with your boys for six, seven yeah. hours. You get in the car and you go home. You're not even living the suburban life. We, we didn't even you're, know you're, half the time who the president of the United States was. Right. Like we're just in this bubble. We didn't care about CNN. We didn't care about politics. We just played baseball. And you get so caught up in the everyday grind and the routine of what do I need to do to get ready for the game? What do I need to do to beat you on a nightly basis? Am I playing today? I would be on the charter a few times and I didn't know where the charter was going because I was so into that series against that team that you just get on the bus, you go to the plane, and you're in the air and you're like, who are we playing? You didn't even know. Right. Didn't and even know. Do you even know when your next off day is coming? Like, no, wait, oh, I mean, some I guess guys, we got like guys, Chicago. Some guys like, do the whole schedule thing. I never did because I had to be in the moment. But like, the, the wives. I, I've been telling you guys this for a long time now. That the wives pretty much have the say in where we're going. Right. Like, unless I'm like super adamant about it. The one thing I will say that I took from the press conference today is Blake Snell said, I don't even know if it's a word, comfortability or something like right. that. Sounds like a word. And it was, yeah, maybe. And, and, and Bob Melvin, I wanted to play for Bob Melvin. Mm hmm. Yeah. So when we're say, saying Farhan, what is he doing? What is he not doing? The city, what is it? Is it the city? Is it the Giants? Bob Melvin's the reason these guys are coming here. Guys want to play for Chapman and Snell directly. They yep. want to play for Bob Melvin. Yep. And if the other guy was here, you don't sign those two guys. Yep. 100%. I also, I also don't think, I also think it's a two way street of like, I don't know if Bob Melvin wants to be the manager here unless he's going to get players. Like, unless they put their money where their, where their mouth was. They committed four hundred million dollars in the off season, and in the shadow of the Dodgers, that may not seem like much, but that's a significant investment in which you also got players, and I think return both relevancy as well as expectations to a team that should have had it the last few years, anyway. Well, that, that both strips credit from Farhan this off season, but then also strips blame from previous off seasons. This is another point that no one ever wanted to hear. But when well, oh, Farhan can't close, it's not about Farhan. It's never been about Farhan. 
Guess, like, guess what? There's nobody who joins the team and they're like, well, I, I didn't like the city. I didn't like the roster. But man, that GM. Boy, what a pitch. You might want to save this sound for October. The okay. Dodgers are not going to win the West. I don't need to say Every, that. Everybody's saying that. that. You're that Every, high the Padres, huh? Everybody's... <laughs> I'm not saying it's the Giants. The team in Arizona is pretty damn good. Went to the World Series last year. Mm-hmm. Everybody just thinks because you spend this money and get this player, you're going to win. 162 games. You guys know anything can happen in six months. You, anything. You, Injuries. Look at him. He's the one Unruly yesterday. fans. He's the one yesterday who yeah. said the Giants are now leading the race for second place. He's well, going three to six not, games. This I don't year. know where the that Giants. Was before I'm not going to s- Fleming and Brett Boone. <laughs> I'm not going to say true. the Giants are going to win because today I said if Evan had two tickets in his right hand yeah. to a Giants game in the next month and two tickets to a Warrior game in the next month, Ooh, I'm going to the Giants. That's a fun question. I'm going Ooh, to the Giants game right that is now. A good question. No, I said yeah, I said this right off the top of the show yesterday. You remember it because we said it off the air too. I thought yesterday. And I'm talking about news cycle wise because it was the previous night that the Snell thing broke. Yesterday might have been the first day in three years that the Giants felt like the game in town. The game in town. There's something about this guy that's interesting. There's no doubt about it. Yeah, and it's I, to me it even goes beyond the two Cy Youngs. Like I've heard him over the years, and he's, he's got some, yeah. you know, he's got some action <laughs> yep. in terms of he's got a personality, yep. and it doesn't mean everybody. He's Evan cool. Knows, Evan knows he's him a cool cat better like, than Blake, I do. Like Blake he knows awesome. He said some Giants fans may not like him early in the season. Yeah, because he's going to walk the bases loaded <laughs> yeah. every inning, and then strike three guys out. And he's going to pitch his way. He can in drive you nuts and out of shape. He, he, like, he, he, Get, get the just for men ready because he's going to get you a lot of gray hairs this year, but he's going to get the job done. Real quick, you're listening to 95.7 The Game, KGMZ FM and HD1 San Francisco, always live on the free Odyssey app, Twitch and YouTube, powered by First NorCal Credit Union. Well, I also think he, he fits with the Giants and what people clung to during the championship years, which was players that marched to the beat of their own drum, players that are individuals that are unique and that you can look at them and say, there's a piece of me there, but also there's something else I want to learn about this guy. Snell is... Himself, and you, you heard it just in the clip right there. He's like, "Yeah, man, I'm I'm here to ball. Like I'm here. I, I'm cool. I'm in the clubhouse. I'm here for my guys. I'm here because of the manager. I'm here to compete. He's a bulldog. He might go three innings, throw 110 pitches, and walk eight. He also might go eight innings and strike out 12. Like, but you gotta watch him each and every time he takes the bump. Well, there's a lot of guys like that. They just, you know, you get two at bats a game and pitch three innings a game. You don't get to know them like you should get to. Yeah, know that's them. a great mm-hmm. point. They, they, there are a lot of personalities on that team. Cool dudes that they get it, but we don't know about it because they don't play nine innings every single day. And you're going to see a little different. He had six gold gloves on the left side of the infield. Like, yeah. I mean, th- that that's different. You got a gold glove catcher potentially. Mm-hmm. He's top fi- his finalist. Jung Hu is probably going to be up for a gold glove in center field. Like this is a whole different ball game. Mm-hmm. And they just got to let the season play out. Like I I refuse. In December, January, February, or March, to anoint someone division champs. Everybody thought the Mets were going to run away with the East last year. They made all the offseason things. Look at the Mets. Look at what they did. Look how much money they spent. Got to play, dude. It's 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 about staying healthy. It's about coming together as a unit. It's about believing in each other. And it's about weathering storms and who can weather the storms. Mookie Betts started at shortstop last night. He's not a shortstop. Gavin Lux is their second baseman. He has got the Steve Sachs thing going right now. Mm-hmm. He's got the yips. When you talk to Dodgers people, I did in spring training, that they're worried about, like, not in the dugout, maybe peripheral guys. <laughs> they're, they're, they're not as sold as everybody. So I, that's, I, I should back up a little bit and say I don't think they're automatically going to win the West, and I wouldn't be surprised if another team did. It's I'm a good division. S- I'm sorry, we've already cut the that's sound. Yeah. That's I'll, st- I'll stick Dodgers, by that. Yeah, the Dodgers are not going to win the it. West. That's already, uh, that's already done. It's but not a given. No, what you're saying is obviously factual. Like, I, like it's, it's baseball. It's baseball. I got this question, though, since, you know, with what you're talking about with the Giants and their personalities, whose philosophy is this? I was just thinking the same thing. What do we got? Because we've been trained now. We've been trained for three to four years. And philosophically... What are the labels that have been put on the Giants? Number one, cheap. Well, that's gone. Number two, positionless baseball. That's gone. Number three, no starting pitcher that doesn't have the name Logan is allowed to pitch into the seventh inning. Bye-bye. Now you've got, hell, you might have seven guys that feel and look like real starting pitchers when the injured guys come back. 
Cobb and Ray. Um, and, and and they're the second mo- biggest spenders of, of the offseason. Every position around the diamond has a guy that's supposed to start there. That's his spot. And play the whole game. Right, except for first base, I guess. Yeah. Except for first base. Yeah. Um, so who who's doing this? this is, everything's the exact opposite of the way it's been. I, I think it's got to be somebody a I can't imagine Farhan was saying, well, we'll just have another offseason like we've had in the past. So it had to be partly him. But it's clear, and I don't know if you guys read Andrew Baggerly's story in The Athletic about this win now. They they made their offseason about trying to re-engage these fans somehow. Mm-hmm. Like, that was a big part of the philosophy, I think. And if they, you know, and and obviously Chapman... And and Snell are big names, and like I think they did it. I think they did it. What what more could they have done? Dude, but to, to your point, Mark, like it, it's it's the coaches are giants. Mm-hmm. Like Kite made a great point on the broadcast the other night. Dave Forgetti was standing next to, I think Bob Melvin, and he goes both former giants, and he just made a subtle little point there to like. It's it's a different feel when you're down there. You got coaches that wore the uniform. You got coaches that played for yeah, the Giants. People who get it. People who get it. And, and then all of a sudden, maybe the old way wasn't working. And if I keep going with the old way, I might not be here. And there's there's a, a general emphasis, like I told you as a guest the other day, on getting back to baseball. If you watch these games, they're running out every ball hard to first. Tyro Estrada hit a triple down the left field line last night because right out of the box, he busted it. They're playing hard. Nothing drove me more crazy last year is when Jock Peterson got a base hit and he stopped on first base and was handing his glove the first, didn't even take a turn for a bobble. Like, that's not Giants baseball. Giants baseball throughout the past is we're going to grind our at-bats, we're going to find a way to beat you, we're going to pitch it, we're going to catch it, but we're going we're gonna to battle you every night with whoever we got. And some guys did that, some guys didn't. It got away from them last year. But one thing the Giants have always done throughout the course of history, at least since I've been a Giants fan, my whole life is play hard and now they're playing hard again i i mean to me i i think the other message is to the fans and and you know we've chronicled maybe the things that have turned off some fans and i'm not saying they're going to be perfect but i mean the fans have to feel good they were heard i mean that that to me is why is was the impetus behind this is the fans have been heard by giants management they they had to have been heard because they've done something this offseason that they never did before, and that's they've totally revamped the team. They brought in free agents, and that's what everybody was saying. How many times? Got, got to get some stars in here. Got to get some real players in here. They did it. The coaches have been heard, too. How so? They now, wanted these players. Oh, yeah. got you. And these guys have played for these yeah. guys. I mean, and yeah. they want to play for these guys. And if I'm a coach, they didn't bring Bob Melvin in for a rebuild. They didn't hire him as their new manager. Here's a bunch of kids. Do your best. And, you know, if I'm coming here, we're winning. If I'm going to be your manager, we're going to need some horses. And Chapman's my guy. He's always been my guy. Blake it, Snell loves it, me. He pitched for me last year and won a Cy Young. Like, we need these guys. So, yeah, the fans have been hurt. Great point. So are the coaches. Yeah, I think I think that's a good point I think Evan brought up with Melvin. is The Giants probably said, Bob, we want to hire you as manager. And he's probably like, well... <laughs> That's great, but I need some assurances that I'm not going to be managing last year's club or a team like last year's club. Or, and they must or, have said, "We're going to do that for you." Not and, just the roster, but here's if I if I go there, here's how we're going to do it. Fa- yeah, and and here's also, how I, I do it. Yeah, I'm not pulling somebody in the third. And right. also, you're not giving me the lineup. Like I'm putting who I want on the field when I want them on the field. And if you tell me that this guy hits better in certain situations. I'll be the I'll be the decision maker of that. He's worked with platoon systems before. He understands how to use analytics. Those are ancillary. At the end of the day, it comes down to winning baseball games, and this guy's got a track record of doing it. So if you're going to bring him in, you got to let him manage how he wants to. And he came from a place where the president of baseball operations, and he didn't see eye to eye on anything at all. He just went through that. So if I'm coming to San Francisco, I ain't going through that again. And this is how I do it, and this is how I'm going to do it. And we're going to win. And if we're going to have some million dollar players, they can't be million dollar babies. Like, I'm not, I'm not taking bleep from 
you know, the guy who's making thirty million a year, and if I do, it's because he's my guy. I think that's part of it, also. Yeah, it's uh, it's gonna be different. I hope so. It's, it's gonna, gonna be, be fun. It's gonna be a lot different. I mean, I'm gonna be honest with you. A week ago or two weeks ago, hey Giants. Sorry, okay. Oh well. <laughs> I was kind of with you, dude. Seriously, and, and I was kind of with you. Like I, I was like Ooh, I grew up a I baseball know. guy, and I was, I'm, I'm looking for something. I was on the diving board though. Like as soon as they got Chapman, I'm like, okay, yeah. You're, you're. I get now. I see what you're doing, but if you go back, I tweeted that second. I go now. Go get a starter, right. and you're ready. And, and 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 thankfully they did. Yeah. Thank, thank, thankfully they did. But I and, and that's why. It's it is unique to me that one, especially a baseball player who will only play once a week. It is unique to me that this person has made the whole roster feel so different. It went from who's pitching day four and day five, and with the addition of one person, you're like, ooh, there's going to be like good starters who can't even make the team. You got two Cy Youngs. Yep. With the runner-up in the Cy Young, who's mm-hmm. your opening day starter, and then Robbie Ray, who won a Cy Young. Who won a Cy Young. And you got six gold gloves on one side. You got six or ten gold gloves behind the plate eventually with Patrick Bailey's best catcher in baseball defensively. Lee can go get him in center. This is just a different field. And you got Harrison not, leading it, like five young guys who any one of whom could walk in and, and be ready to roll. And more importantly, you're, you're sending David VR and Casey Schmidt and really good players to triple A. Down. So yeah. Meckler, who had a great spring training that I'm not a big fan of, but he looked a little bit different this year in spring. Defensively, I'm not a huge fan. De- offensively, the kid can hit. Um, so now you have depth to your organization. So this like backs everybody up a little bit. Yep. And I heard you guys talking yesterday about, well, it doesn't give the young guys a chance. Any organization needs depth. Mm-hmm. And when you go to Sacramento when guys get hurt, now you go to Sacramento to get guys that can play. David Villar was a different guy this year in spring training. Different <laughs> build. Skinnier, faster, more relaxed at the plate, had a better approach. He, he, I was most impressed with him and Matos, just seeing those guys down there. So now you're bumping some guys down because you have depth, which makes you better for the long haul. No, I'm not that, saying get the parade ready on Marcus no, Street. That, and that's I'm just all, saying it's a different feel. I, I, and I agree. It's just interesting. You know, they've finally put, and I, and I do wonder about this, not that I ever think people at press conferences are telling the full truth, but Farhan said some things out loud that in theory you knew were not true and you knew that they would be proven not true he twice said the off season's over and yeah, yeah but that's that's and a, it's ploy. a negotiating that's ploy, a ploy but but you knew but again he said it and then the whole starting pitching thing look we have been banging this in your head we want an avenue for our young pitchers to play well the second Robbie Ray comes back Harrison is your only young guy that's allowed in that rotation, and even he's going to have to work his way in. There are five other starters. If Hicks is a starter, it's a good thing. No, you can move it's a great the thing. Good thing. It's a great thing. It's just interesting to me that he went ahead and said things out loud that he knew. I think he knew were going to be proven incorrect. He said things out loud today that he's going to be at Cobb's Comedy Shop after we got to play this. Yeah, oh. it's <laughs> a store they or whatever. Want it is. him. The bottom line, line no, is, I can start this off season. Yeah. I can tell you that they're starting the season with action. Trying to run material. <laughs> That's the bottom line. Uh, FP and Mark Willard don't go anywhere. They'll be here till six o'clock. Warriors at seven. Evan Giddings at six with the pregame show on ninety-five seven. The game.